Oh, happy days. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, this night is for you. <laughs> and it's a good night to die. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. First Kings chapter 19. We need to get loaded and armed. The Lord is good all the time, isn't he? If God be with us, who can be against us? <laughs> Who's your worst enemy? You. <laughs> Thank you, Master, for your mercies are new every morning. First Kings 19. In verse 11. Hallelujah. Now this is the Lord speaking to Elijah. And he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and the, broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. A still, small voice. Until you get still, you won't hear. Oh, hallelujah. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because of the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left and they seek to take my life. And the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Namash, as king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Malo, and you shall anoint as prophet in your place. So God was getting ready to replace Elijah with Elisha. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to the media. <laughs> of Baal. <laughs> and every mouth that has not kissed him. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel and all whose knees have not bowed. So he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12. Now, I want you to know that anybody had 12 yoke of oxen was wealthy. Amen. And Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. In other words, invitation. Now, you got to remember, Elijah was the prophet of the Lord, called fire down, all kinds of killed 400 and you know I mean he did all kinds of miracles God was with him and everything so what he was in doing was inviting him to cross over everyone say cross over in other words he was inviting him to come out of the flesh into a life of the spirit And he left the axe and ran after Elijah. And he said, please let me kiss my father and my mother and my children and so forth. Then I will follow you. Let me kiss them goodbye. He was very soulish. And he said to him, go back again. What have I done to you? How can you delay this invitation? How can you reject this invitation? 
So Elijah had to do something. Does everybody understand? So verse 21, so Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. In other words, I'm done with my past. I'm accepting the invitation to cross over. I'll show you. He killed the oxen, the equipment, and gave it to the people. And they ate, and then he arose. I mean, he, 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 so Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen, slaughtered them, and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment. He even destroyed the plow and the equipment and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. He was in the process of crossover. But see, you can't cross over until you're willing to do something. Cut loose from yesterday. It's our responsibility to destroy everything. The Lord says, if you build on what you have been freed from, it's called an abomination. Amen? He's looking for individuals that are not still living in the past. He's trying to get his children out of the soulish arena, the woe is me, living for myself, survival mode instead of surrender mode. Emotional living. Emotional choices. People that live by emotion are the most dangerous people on the earth. Even terrorists live by emotion. Oh, is everybody okay? In this, there's an area where we're coming out of physical mortal to spiritual immortality. We get a new label and a new reality and a new identity. And go to Kings 17. First King. When I was in my addiction stages for 20 years, over 20 years, lived to get high, was drug dealing and everything else. When I finally got to a point after I hit enough walls, dragged through enough bushes, OD'd enough times. Kept hearing the Lord's voice say, you know how many people you're killing? How many families you destroyed? How many children have no mother or no father because of you? I tried to bury my brain into more dope, but it didn't work. The voice didn't let up. And I finally said, okay. What do I do? And he said something to me. He said, do you want to get off the drugs and alcohol or do you want a new life? And I had literally had to consider what he was saying. Because, see, I always wanted to get off the drugs and alcohol. I was done with it, but I couldn't stop because I was an addict. And I was demonized, totally demon-possessed. Because that's what alcohol does and that's what drugs do. They open doors of demons. And many other things. And I said, that means I need to give up family. I need to give up everything. See, if you want a new life, you have to get rid of the old one. Amen? You can't bring the old life into the new one. Only God can bring what he wants to bring to you in the new life. And I realized it was a journey I was going to enter if I accepted this invitation. I didn't understand it was the beginning of a crossover. And I said to him, I want a new life. And you know what he said to me? Show me. Show me you want a new life. So I checked into the detox and so forth. And I, they gave me this 12-step thing. I took and folded it all together and made one prayer out of it. And I began to pray. Because I believed that there was a God, but I wasn't saved yet. Within a process of about two months, there was a visitation from the Lord. I crossed over. And my life was never the same. Never. Why? Because that new life came from the throne of God. And that's what he does. He brings us a new life from his throne room to reconnect us back to home. 
And so that you and I can be a vessel that brings new life into this realm. Knows how to open portals. So there's always enough opportunities to cross over, but so many times people don't realize it. In verse 8, Then a word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Wow. Now, this is Elijah. Because there was a big famine right now. People were starving all over the place. And so the Lord is saying, look it. Here's a servant of the Lord. He says, I got somebody waiting to feed you. Go over here. Here's a widow. She's going to provide for you. Okay, so Elijah goes over there. And so he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now you got to remember, this is heavy duty famine. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin. And a little oil in a jar. See, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I make Go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and what? Died. She was preparing her last supper. Now here's a kicker. See, God is about to provide an opportunity to cross over. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. 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 Satan's greatest weapon is deception. His power is fear. Do not fear. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. She must have thought, man, what the snap? The servants of the Lord is nuts. I'm about to cook my last meal and die, me and my son, and he wants me to make him a cake, give him a part of this. But she began to remove all her reasoning, her justification, realizing that he was a prophet. And the word says, hear a prophet and you will prosper. <laughs> make me a cake and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Now, she's thinking, I don't have enough. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Hello. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. Now I want you to know that she also took Elijah in the house and provided shelter for him. <clears throat> then the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Again, it was an opportunity to, to cross over. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and his, his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. In other words, he died. So she said to Elijah, what have I done with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and kill my son? And so he said to her, give me your son. So she took him out of her arms and carried him in the upper room where he was staying and laid on him, laid, laid him on his own bed. And he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times. How many times? What's three? Resurrection. Amen. And cried out to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God. Most people would have tried it once and booked. 
Oh, Lord, my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then a woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are the man of God and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth is true. These are opportunities to cross over coming out of the carnal reasoning and senses and believing, of course, like I said, the prophets or what we call the word of God because the word of God is prophetic. You believe the word, you'll prosper. Amen? Amen. She and her son, <laughs> again, they were getting ready to die and they trusted God. In this, there's something that she had to do. She had to deny herself. She even had to deny her son. She had to deny everything she considered of survival. And she had to fall into a place called surrender. Amen? Now, in this denying of self, it was a crossover. God gives opportunity to move, and he also opens dimensional ports of access. Dimensional ports of access for me and you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Oh, glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 26, let's speak it together. Again, the word call or calling, the word, we, we are called to battle. Amen? Amen? Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom, and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system. So also the word call means invite. You know, God's word is three-dimensional. And only by the Spirit of God will you be able to interpret what time and what dimension he's talking about. That's why many people don't understand the Word of God. They read it like a book when it's God's words that have been recorded. Is everybody okay? Amen. See, you can learn it all up here, and it never can reach here. There's one thing that prevents it from getting there. It's called P-R-I-D-E, pride. Pride will never allow it to enter your heart. It will stay in your mind. Hallelujah. Verse 26, let's speak it together. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called or invited. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us what? Wisdom from God and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Again, there's an invitation to cross over with access to dimensional ports, there's things, again, that prevent this crossover. One of the things he's talking about, because what does he say? Okay, wise, wisdom. See, worldly wisdom prevents a lot of things. It's called intellectualism. Carnalism is intellectualism. It prevents many people from doing what God asks them to do. See, you can still, there are people that can memorize this book and the page numbers and still not have a relationship because the relationship is in the spirit. Does everybody understand? It's in God is spirit. So he's trying to get us to cross over, come out of the flesh, the carnality, into the spirit so that there can be a relationship. 
you know, after my visitation from the Lord, I didn't want to read no Bible. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Like I said, I was visited multiple times, filled with the Spirit. I knew exactly how the Holy Spirit would wake me up and everything else, and I'd say, he kept trying to push the Bible on me. And I said, I don't want it. Why? Because I saw so many hypocrites. People were walking around with Bibles and doing the things that they shouldn't. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I said, man, just tell me what to do, Lord. I'll just do it. And he finally convinced me that I needed to have the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> of course, in my visitation, the first words out of his mouth is, my Bible is true. So I knew that the Bible was true. I just didn't want to get into it. Why would I have to read this when I know the person? The apostles didn't have this. They had the Holy Spirit. Some, sometimes I want to take everybody's Bible away. Now what are you going to do? I used to do it in jail when we were ministering to jail for almost 17 years. I tell everybody, put your Bible away. What's the Spirit telling you? <sighs> you know why? Because they're relying on the letter and not the person. See, that's where the word says the letter kills and the spirit gives life because if you can't obey it, it's going to kill you. Oh, happy days. You may know it, but you can't obey it. Amen? So this invitation to cross over, access to dimensional ports, intellectualism can kill a person. That's thinking. There's no place in the spirit for that. It prevents the crossover. Not able to deny self or selfish worldly influence. They can't trust in God. They disqualifies themselves because they keep rejecting, not even knowing it. And what happens? There's no faith activated. No faith activated. No faith activated. See, intellectualism has no faith. Does everybody understand it? He has no faith. It has, I know I can do. It's all me. I got the knowledge. Yes. I got the talent. I got the strength. I can do it. It's got nothing to do with relationship. Oh, God, I'll do all kinds of things for you. He doesn't want you to do anything for him. He just wants you to be an empty vessel filled with his spirit so he can move through you. And we get out of the way. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, yeah, 2. Wow. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? First Corinthians 2 verse 1. Let's speak it together. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. He was talking about excellent speech or wisdom of the world. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom carnal wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. See, when an individual is in a place of carnality, his faith is in the wisdom of men. Carnal wisdom, not the wisdom of the Spirit of God. He says, I don't want your faith to be in the wisdom of men. I want your faith to be in the power of God. Amen? Amen? Is everybody okay? Not willing to reach the level of hum humility will prevent a, a person from reaching this place. They can't, they can't reach the level of humility. They can't reach the level of reverence. They're so smart, they're stupid. Does everybody understand it? Listen, I have many relatives like that. Oh, they have, they're well, they got wealth, they got money, they got positions, they got all kinds of stuff. And you know what? They walk around like they're, uh, they got a disease. They're, they got masks. I'm surprised they don't have rubber suits on them. 
because they're so afraid, because they listen to the media. There is no relationship. Well, I believe in Jesus. No, you don't. Because the word believe means to what? Follow. If you follow, you cross over. Is everybody okay? Proverbs 12. Smart in the world, stupid in the spirit. Oh, happy days. Proverbs 12. It's like my phones. It's so smart, it's stupid. <laughs> Verse 1. Is everybody there? Proverbs 12, verse 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. Whoever hates correction is stupid. Hello. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of a wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Again, so many people get offended when corrected because they're still fighting from themselves. I ain't taking nothing. You ain't telling me nothing. Well, you prideful flesh creature headed on the way to hell. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Remember, correction brings protection. Amen? Correction brings protection. Hallelujah. Luke 9. When a person is in that condition, they have a demon called pride. And it is an evil presence. It's an evil entity. <laughs> Too many people think that a Christian can't have a demon. It's amazing to me. Where do you think they're trying to get to? They're trying to prevent us from crossing over. And we cast out demons out of Christians all the time. Listen, a demon is not a respecter of what? You mean you can have a demon with the Holy Spirit there? Yes, you can. There are multiple rooms in this temple. That's what they're called members. If you don't have control over something... One of your members, there's a demon there. Someone else does. Amen? Is everybody okay? Luke chapter 9. Demons of pride and unbelief. In verse 23. Luke 9, 23. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And he said to them all, all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. In other words, cross over when? Daily. Do you understand it is important for me and you to cross over daily? Every day we need to get to that place where we cross over. Come out of the flesh into the spirit. That's why the first thing in the morning you must seek Amen? The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. Amen? Every morning you must go after until you cross over. People don't get dressed with the full mind. Oh, Lord, thank you for today. Bless me, prosper me, and protect me. See ya. Don't work. You ain't crossed over at all. If anything, <laughs> something's going to cross over to you. And if anyone desires to come after, let him deny himself, take up his cross and cross over daily. And what? Follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? 
Whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man, will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and in his Father's and only and holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Wow. Take up your cross over. Take up your cross over daily. Amen? Remember, He's saying, deny yourself. What protects self? Pride. What protects pride? Fear. What protects fear? Anger and lying. All of these things are spirits that protect one another. <laughs> these are demonic spirits in their presence. Listen, there's so many... Um, Attributes of fear. Fear is anxiety, stress, amen, panic. People have panic attacks. Oh, that's a demon. That's the presence of evil. What do you think asthma is? It's a spirit of fear. Is everybody okay? Attacks. They're restless, resulting. People run to addiction, alcohol, um, Drugs, they work more, pornography, they work out, they exercise, they're all trying to stay busy to stay free. But they're actually managing demons. They're not free from them. Amen? They run into false hope and no faith. There is no activated faith at all. Pride will prevent the word from reaching the heart and the ability to cross over from flesh to spirit. Luke 18. Now think about this. Enoch was taken. Amen? He, was cro he crossed over. Noah had to build an ark to cross over, but he crossed over into a new world. Amen? Amen. If you want a new life, you must be willing to cross over because that's where new life is. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a crossover moment. You and I must daily cross over by connecting. See, when you're declaring, declaring, declaring God's word, you're building a bridge to cross over. But people declare the word, build half of a bridge and stop. They don't go all the way through. You know why? Because they live by how they feel. Oh, that's enough. Ah, good. Yeah. Is everybody all right? Amen. Luke 18. Luke 18, glory. Daily crossover. Why do you think people blow it? Why do you think they backslide? Because they didn't cross over. Man, you cross over, you ain't backsliding. Amen. It's only those that are in the flesh that backslide. It's our responsibility every single day to cross over. Daily crossover. Now, when I know I'm in the flesh, bye. I shut my door. I don't say nothing. If I ain't crossed over yet for some reason. You know, sometimes God will pull his presence just to see what you're going to do. See who you're going to call. See what you're going to look for. See what you're going to try and fulfill. See if you're going to go to something that brings a false fulfillment instead of him. That's when you say, Lord, you're my fulfillment. You're my fulfillment. You're my fulfillment. Get back here. <laughs> For I kill somebody. <laughs> Take Nate, your Holy Spirit from me. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Where did I say to go? Luke 18, 24. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to know it's not a real eye of a needle, okay? That'd be a miracle if a camel went through one of those things. Actually, it was during, they used to have in their places of protection, it was a small port that was open. It was called the eye of a needle. 
And so when they were being attacked and invaded, the camels couldn't get underneath the end or, or, or horses. So only people could get through there. But he's saying the person that's so rich and so intellect and all of this other stuff, he's all of that's in the way. They're trying to carry it all. They're hoarders. Hoarders of wealth. Hoarders of intellect. Hoarders of worldly wisdom. Hoarders of worldly talents. And they can't get in there and access. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Verse 26. And those who heard it said, who can then be saved? And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. It's going to take some faith. Then Peter said, see, we have left all and followed you. And Jesus said to him, surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. Rich man, intellectual, self-sustaining, survivalist, not able to see or, or connect to the future. Too much of a lover of this temporary realm, disqualified to cross over. Why? Because intellectualism doesn't activate faith. It activates flesh. Amen? Does everybody understand? That's what the enemy wants to get you. Remember. He wants to get you to what you know instead of who you know. Isaiah 51. Daily crossover. In verse 9. Speak it. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days and the generations of old. For you are not, for you are not the arm that, can, that cut Rahab apart. For are you not the arm that cut Rahab apart and wounded the serpent? Are you not the one who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, and made the depths of the sea a road for the redeemed to what? Who crosses over? The redeemed. So the ransom of the Lord shall return it and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, sorrow and sighing shall flee from them. Think about this. Again, Elijah crossed over the Jordan, both Elijah and Elisha. And Moses crossed over the Red Sea. There was always a crossover. Jesus crossed over. It was symbolic for me and you to every day cross over. Why? Leave yourself on the other side. On this side. Amen. Redeem shall over, cross over. It's a daily crossover for me and you. Mark 5. Mark chapter 5. And verse 21. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And when Jesus had crossed over, hallelujah, again, <laughs> By boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. So he crossed over, didn't he? And he begged him earnestly, saying, My little girl, my daughter, lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him. Why? He was answering the prayer because he what? Crossed over. 
he went with them, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now, in other words, they were bumping off of him. And a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. See what those physicians will do sometimes? See, because they're carnal. They're carnal. They only know about the world system unless they're spirit-filled. And God has placed them in position. But God is trying to pull many of these carnal heads out so that they cross over and get filled with the Spirit of God and God can place them to be in position so that they can utilize the things of God to rescue many people. Amen? I remember I, I went to a, a, a doctor I was recommended to go through for something. And the first thing I went in there, he laid his hands on my feet and began to pray for me. I said, this is this, cool. What you got to say? Man, don't worry about it. God's going to heal you. Praise God. I love it. That's what I want to hear. And we're going to turn things around. See, he was led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. So this woman here, this one, all these fishes, they, they, they destroyed this poor woman. She was broke. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Man, it's called faith. <laughs> God was allowing an opportunity for her to cross over. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who crossed over? <laughs> who crossed over, man? Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, you may say, what? who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, because she was humble, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And Jesus said to her, daughter, what did he say? Daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Oh, I love it. I love it, man. <laughs> Proverbs 8. Daily crossover. Proverbs 8.32. Is everybody there? Let's speak it now. Therefore, listen to me, my children. For blessed are those who what? Keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. Do not disdain. Blessed is the man who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life for, and obtains favor from the Lord. Who is he talking about? Wisdom and understanding from God. For he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. And all those who hate me love death. Whoa. Why? Because they reject from God's wisdom and they're accepting worldly wisdom instead. He said, then if you hate me, you, you enjoy death, obviously. It's divine wisdom and understanding will guide you to the daily crossover. John chapter 4. Verse 22. John 4, 22. And let's start at 21. It 
And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. See, there are many people worshiping what they don't know. They don't even know they're worshiping themselves, their businesses, their families, their abilities, their talents, their intellect. They're worshiping these things and not even knowing it. Their possessions. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Spirit and what? Truth. Worship of self, worship of, you know, it's not a worship from the heart. People may sing songs just to sing them. But in the beginning, you do what you got to do until there is a heart change. You've got to battle. You've got to fight. You've got to deny yourself until you do cross over. But I guarantee you, you will cross over as long as you don't wimp out. Give up. Go carnal head. Amen? You will cross over. It will happen. So many times people quit and getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want you to know something. Friday night, you bring your requests, or what, God, what, God, what you're asking God, you put it at your feet, and I'm going to run and lay hands on anyone that wants prayer so that there'll be an impartation. We need a, an impartation. Why? For an opportunity to cross over. Hallelujah. Romans, uh, I think we're done here. Yeah, Romans 8. Romans 8. Verse 12. I won't pray for anyone that doesn't want to be prayed for. Unlike laying your hands on a rock. Believe me, I've done it. Pray for someone who's like, oof. Unless you want the demon cast out, then you can, we'll do that. Romans 8, verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die. If you're living according to the flesh, did you cross over? No. Listen, you can live according to the flesh one day and live according to the Spirit the next. Why? Because you cross over one day and didn't the other. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body or the flesh, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by where we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we what? Suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Oh, God wants to always advance us. He always wants to advance us. Everybody okay? For the, verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So believe me, your mission is much more important than you realize. You've been sent into this world to fulfill a mission. Amen? Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we are ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Hope that is what? Seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? 
But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Does everybody understand that? Perseverance. Again, the flesh is associated with mortal. Amen? The spirit is associated with immortality. Now, grab hold of this because there are spirits that are eternal. They've never put on mortal. Or you and I have. That's why you and I will become immortality, which is eternal ones that have put on flesh at one time. But have now been born in the spirit. It's different. Ephesians 2. And then one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 2. Daily crossover. Verse 14. See, when you and I worship in spirit and in truth, we open up portals. And it grants us access so that you and I can cross over. That's why you worship till you drop. Come on, you shop till you drop, right? You work till you drop. We do everything else till we drop. I won't go any further than that. Verse 14. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might re reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, or the what? Crossover. Jesus crossed over, man. Thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. That's crossing over. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom the whole building being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are, what? You also are being, what? Built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Daily crossover. Again, speaking the word of prayer and prayer begins to build the bridge to crossover. As you worship, listen, Spirit, come and take me. Bring me over, cross me over. I'm going to be out of this flesh and connected. See, when you truly have crossed over, you're not living anymore from your past or from the present. You're living from the future to the present. Now, the enemy only has access to you from your past. He can't access you from the future because he has none. Amen? He doesn't have one. He's finished. He's just out on bail right now. Amen? But he's going to go into prison soon for a thousand years. And then he's going to cook. And I want to close it. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Know who you are. It's not, it's not easy to know who you are without being filled with the Spirit. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, go after the Baptist. Speak those booklet prayers until you, you seek God. And get filled. And, and if you come Friday night and you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, ask the Lord. Make it one of your requests. 
You know, I saw a testimony today about this guy who was a missionary and a preacher and so forth. And, and he never knew a Christian could have a demon. Until he had a meeting with a pastor and they were discussing stuff about it. And he got irritated and agitated and Hello? That means the demon's there, man. They hate it. They don't want to be exposed. And he made excuses. Well, I got to go now. I got to meet. I got to meet my wife and this. And he left the office. And as he was driving home, the Lord spoke to him and said, you have a demon. He's like, what? Oh, Christians can't have these demons. You have a demon. And he explained to him which one it was. And a dude... He prayed, commanded to leave. He said, I felt it leave me. Praise God. See, demons will leave you as you praise and worship too. As you're sowing in the word. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you pound. You keep eat, speaking light, you eat light. Spirits start to flow and run. But they're going to come knocking. And if you don't know which ones are knocking, you're going to say hello. Amen. So don't, and be careful. Don't just go somewhere and let someone lay hands on you. You don't know where they've been. Amen. I've seen many people, believe me, I, I was a pastor at another drug program at one time, volunteer pastor. These guys were huffers out there, man, smoking cigarettes. And I kept telling them, this, don't you understand? That's still a spirit. It's addiction. Dip is addiction and all this other stuff. And I kept saying, and then, then they're lying, allowing these guys to lay hands on one another. I finally went to the director. I said, man, this isn't going to work. You people aren't getting free. I said, you, you, the only thing you're teaching them is demon management. I said, you're letting them lay hands on one another. He says, you see a demon around every corner. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just talking to one right now. My volunteer job lasted a year, as usually. Hallelujah. I was cut loose. But these guys, because I used to pray for them, that I made them speak deliverance prayers. And I would lay my hands on them and cast demons out of them every Monday night. And so everything, many of the guys that had graduated contacted me and said, man, you got any more of those? Because we used to have these kingdom cards and prayers and whatever. They would always contact me and say, and some of them went on and got married and so forth, and they did very well. Why? Because they were ignoring the rule that was going on there. In fact, they all fell at one time anyway. So the, one of the directors and everything and the guy that was playing all this rock and roll music that was uh, secular music. People don't realize, man. Listen, you listen to secular music, you're opening yourself. You're inviting demons. Amen? You're inviting them. 1 Corinthians 15.50. Let's speak it. The final crossover. Glory. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the what? Last trumpet, which is known as the Feast of Trumpets, which is the next feast to be fulfilled. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, but, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on what? Immortality. And when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you protect this seed and allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory. And grant us, Lord, the wisdom from above. Help us to constantly deny ourselves and a thirst and hunger, not only for your righteousness, but to cross over and to walk with you heart to heart, hand to hand, and cheek to cheek, that we may know you and behold your glory and express your character to this world in true love, power, and truth. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.